Spanish, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship ACP Oakland to seek out new language and new civilization, to boldly go where no note takers have gone before. All right, let's take some notes. Greetings and goodbyes. This is your first set. And this is what I'm going to teach you, how to start a conversation in Spanish and how to end it in Spanish, because you kind of got to do that if you want to have a conversation in Spanish. Let's get started. First, you'll need a Spanish notebook. Let's talk a bit about your Spanish notebook. You're going to use the Cornell note system, and you're going to keep them all together in one notebook for the whole year. We'll put all of your vocabulary notes starting from the first page, and we'll just go progressively throughout the year. They'll be all together and easy to access for you, and they'll be in order, so you can easily find different things when you need to go back and review. You'll use the last 20 pages for a special section on utility words and grammar. Utility words are helpful, handy words that don't fit into any given topic, prepositions, adverbs, conjunctions, things like that. And then we'll also talk about grammatical concepts and put those in the back, things like how to conjugate verbs and how sentence structure work. So we'll put those at the end so that they'll be easy to find and distinguish from your notes on vocabulary. If you don't have a notebook, let me know. I can get one to you. Now, warp speed and taking notes. Here's your first page. We'll start by drawing a line across the top. And you're going to write two things up there. The tema, which is the topic or objective, and then the pregunta esencial, the essential question. And every set of notes, you'll write these at the top, and you'll separate them from the rest of the notes with a horizontal line. And that way, it'll be easy to identify the notes right out the top. Oh, this is my notes on greetings and goodbyes, for example. Why don't you write that down right now? And your pregunta esencial, how do I start and end a conversation in Spanish? Pause and write that down, and then we'll take the next step. Now draw two lines going vertically down the page, here and here. This column we're going to label Espanol, and it's where you're going to write the Spanish version of the word. That's how you say Spanish in Spanish, Espanol. Notice how it's not capitalized, because in Spanish we don't capitalize languages. On this side, you're going to write Ingles, because that's the English side, and that's how you say English in Spanish, Ingles. This column here is preguntas, which means questions. That's a space for you to write questions that you have as you take the notes, observations, uh, anything that you need to jot down, just an FYI or something to remember. It could be how to remember those words. Let's try this out. Let's say I give you some Spanish vocabulary. Maybe I'll show you this phrase here, buenos dias. Spock's telling us, good morning. And then he tells us, buenas tardes, which means good afternoon. And then his kitty says, buenas noches, which means good night or good evening. Now, I just gave you that vocabulary. What do you do with your notes? Well, you're going to put it down in your notes columns. Let's try it out. It looks something like this. You'll write down buenos dias for the Spanish section and good morning in the English section. Then you'll write buenas tardes, good afternoon, buenas noches, good night or good evening. And that's how you'll keep your notes. Notice how it's nice and easy to study. You might ask a question like, why is the first one buenos, but the others are buenas? Good question. You could write that down in the pregunta section as a reminder to ask Mr. Cox about it in class. And I might say something like, well, that's gender in Spanish. Things that end in O, like buenos, are masculine. And things that end in A, like buenas, are feminine. We'll be learning about that soon. Let's continue with some more vocabulary. Here's one, hola. It means, hello, jot it down. Now, in response, someone could say, que tal? That means, what's up? Que tal, what's up? Maybe someone says, que pasa? That means, what's happening? It's kind of like saying, what's up, as well. Any of these are greetings, and someone could answer, que pasa, and say, nada, nothing. What's up? Nothing. All right, pause the video, and make sure you've got your notes down, just like this. Let's move on and see what else Star Trek can teach us. Here's Jordy saying, ¿Cómo estás? That's the informal way of saying, how are you? Skip a line and leave some space to write the formal version in just a moment. And someone could respond and say, muy bien. 
that means very well or very good. And then they might ask back itu, which means and you, again, the informal way of saying that. And he could respond regular, which you guessed it means regular or all right. But maybe Jory uses the formal way and says, como esta usted? That means, how are you, formal version. And Bones might respond, muy bien, y usted? Very good, and you, but the formal version. And maybe Jory responds to that and says, ah, more or less, that would be más o menos, more or less. Pause and add those to your notes, and then we'll continue. Your notes should now look something like this. Put the other phrases afterwards. Muy bien, regular, más o menos. Let's try some more. If Worf says, ¿Cómo te llamas? That means, what's your name? And maybe the Borg responds and says, Me llamo Borg. That means, my name is Borg. Now, literally, you're saying, ¿Cómo te llamas? means, what do you call yourself? And the answer would be, I call myself Borg, me llamo Borg. So this isn't a word-for-word -word translation of what your name is, but that's the meaning. And como te llamas is the most common way to ask for someone's name in Spanish. Como te llamas? What's your name? And me llamo Borg. My name is Borg. Pause and jot those down. Your notes should look something like this. Let's say you've talked to someone and now you're ending the conversation. You want to say, it was nice to meet him. You could say, mucho gusto, nice to meet you. Literally, mucho gusto means it was a pleasure, like a lot of pleasure, as in it was a pleasure to meet you. And someone could respond and say, igualmente, likewise. It was likewise a pleasure to meet you. Mucho gusto, nice to meet you, or a lot of pleasure to meet you. Igualmente, likewise. Literally, it means Equally, as in, it was equally a pleasure to meet you. Igualmente, likewise. Now, you could also say encantado or encantada, which also means nice to meet you, but it's a bit more intense. Like, not just nice to meet you, but delighted to meet you. Oh, I was delighted to meet you. It's actually related to the French phrase you may have heard, enchanté. So if you ever see someone who says enchanté in French, you know, they're saying encantado or encantada delighted to meet you. And, of course, you can respond to that as well. Igualmente. Likewise. It was likewise. I am likewise delighted to meet you. And here's what your notes should look like. Pause and get yourself caught up, and then we'll continue. Next phrase, adios, means goodbye. It's a good way to end a conversation. Now, you could also go with Hasta luego, which means see you later or until later. Literally, until later, but hasta luego. It's, the phrase means until later. Then you could say hasta mañana, which means until tomorrow or see you tomorrow. And you could say nos vemos, which means we'll see ya. Literally, we see each other, but it's like saying see you later, see ya. Pause and add those to your notes. And let's get a few more phrases here. Gracias. Spock is telling us, thank you. It's a logical thing to say. And if you want to respond to that, you could say, de nada. Thank you, Data. Gracias. Thank you. De nada. You're welcome. De nada means you're welcome. Literally means of nothing. So it's kind of like saying it was nothing. All right. Another phrase or two. Señora means Mrs. or ma'am, an adult lady you would call her senora. Uh, a young lady would be senorita. And I've got the abbreviations here for you, so write those down. Kind of like, you know, Mrs. is abbreviated M-R-S, or senora is abbreviated S-R-A. Uh, so senora, lady, ma'am, uh, madam, and senorita, young lady, or miss. And for guys, you just get one, senor, which means Mr. or Sir, um, and it would be used for, you know, a guy of any age, old or, or young. Señor, Sir, or Mr. Add those to your notes. All right, I think that is enough for today, but I do want to pause and talk just a moment about flashcards. Now, 
Flashcards, you can take any piece of paper, but often index cards are used. And just a couple of notes. One, make sure you write nice and neat and tidy so they're easy to read, not only for you, but for whoever is helping you to practice. Let's try with a sample. Let's say I had the phrase, muy bien. I'd write it on one side. You know, that's a little small. Let's make it bigger. There we go. That's more like it. Use the space. Make it as big as you can. Muy bien. That's the Spanish side. And on the other side, let's write what it means. Very good. And you can use that to practice. What I recommend is not necessarily making flashcards for every single word or phrase we learn in class, but maybe take the notes and then make flashcards for the most challenging ones or the ones you need the most practice for. All righty. That'll be all for today. Thank you, class. Get those notes down and take good care of them. Adios.